Welcome everybody, I'm Federico Magistri. I would like to talk about my paper segmentation based for the registration of plant point clouds for phenotyping. So what is phenotyping? Phenotyping is a task of measuring the appearance and the aspect of the plant. It's a very important task because based on this decision, on, of, on this measurement, breeders take decision on when to harvest the crop field or on, on which cultivar to use for the next season. However, current approaches for phenotyping are actually time consuming and requires intrusive operation. For example, to measure the, the leaf area, which is a very important characteristic of the plants because it tells us how much sunlight is the plant capturing. So to measure this, um, this aspect, we need a human operator inside the field and uh, manually taking the measure with a flatbed scanner, as you can see in this picture. So our key question is, can we do better with robotic technologies? Our goal is to monitor plant growth by means of tracking its phenotypic traits using 3D points cloud and registration techniques. The main contribution of this paper is a fully automatic procedure to monitor plant growth. We start with the semantic skeletonization of each point cloud in our considered time series. And after this skeletonization, we perform a hierarchical data association that will uh, enable us to measure um, different phenotypic traits over time. So the skeletons, um, in general, are a compact way to define the um, topology and the geometry of an object. They are used in different, um, uh, different fields. For example, in computer graphics, they are used to drive the animation of, of characters. Or in a computer vision, they are used to understand the, the pose of a humans and therefore to uh, recognize the activities, for example. So to start our skeletonization approach, we only need the 3D point cloud without considering any colors or any normals. So the first step is to compute the fast point feature histogram for each point. Then, based on this feature, we will classify each point as stem or leaf using the, the SVM. After this first classification, this first binary classification, we will consider only the point classified as leaf, and then we will cluster them into individual leaves. To do, to do this clustering approach, to do this clustering classification, we have used the, the DB scan. Once we have done this um, classification, so now once that we have each organ individually, so the stem or one of the leaf, we are able to start our skeletonization. Our skeletonization is done through the self-organizing map, which is a, a, an unsupervised model that was introduced in the 80s. The self-organizing maps will give us the, the nodes and the connectivity of our skeleton for each organ individually, and then we will put them back together to obtain the skeletonization of the whole plant. So how does the self-organizing map work? The first thing that we have to do is to define an input, an input map. In this way, in, 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 in this case, it's just uh, an, a, a grid, as you can see in the picture. And to each node in this grid, there is an associated um, 3D coordinates because our input data is, um, is of course, three-dimensional. So once we have defined our input grid, we are able to start our um, an iterative procedure that after convergence will give us uh, our skeleton. So the first step, so at each iteration, the first step is to draw one random sample from the, from the input point cloud. And then we, can, we find the, best, the, the closest point in our input map. This closest point will be called best, best matching unit, and then it will, will be used to update the weights of all the other nodes in the input grid. So basically, if we will update the coordinates of the best matching unit to be as close as possible to our random sample, and then we will move all the other points in the grid accordingly to the distance to the best matching unit. Once we have done our scalarization, for all the, po the point cloud in our time series, we are able to start our data association. So the first thing that we do is to uh, find the, the correspondences between one, or one organ in uh, the first point cloud and one organ in the second point cloud. To do this, we define a cost matrix in which each element ij is the Euclidean distance between one um, node in point cloud p and one node in point, point cloud q. Based on this cost matrix, we can find the optimal solution with the Hungarian method. And we will use this first data association between organs to further compute the association between each node in the skeletons. 
Again, we define one cost matrix in which each point, uh, each element ij of this matrix um, is the Euclidean distance of node in uh, scale, uh, of the node in skeleton P, uh, one node in skeleton Q, only if those two nodes belong to already um, associated organs. So once we have defined this cost matrix, we define two additional constraints. The first constraints will tell us that each node in skeleton P will be matched to exactly one node in skeleton Q, and the second constraints will tell us that each node in skeleton Q is at most one correspondence. Again, the, the, the Hungarian method will tell us, will give us the, the optimal association that will minimize the, the total sum of the Euclidean distances based on this cost matrix. These um, data associations are then used to perform a non-rigid registration of, that will deform the point cloud P to the point cloud Q. As you can see, the, the point cloud is slowly converging to the, point, to the second point cloud. This data association and then this non-rigid registration approach leads to better results compared to previous approaches. So once that we have done this data association and then uh, we are able to compute different, um, different traits of our plants over time and to track them. For example, we can compute the stem diameter, the stem length, the leaf area and the leaf length. So how do we compute the stem, the stem diameter? For example, we consider each point in the skeleton that was classified as stem and then we consider each segment of the stem and compute the main axis of that part of the stem. Given this main axis, we find the minimum distance between the, the mean distance between each point in the point cloud that was associated to that skeleton, to that node in the skeleton. In a similar way, we, we compute the leaf area. For example, again, we consider each point in one leaf, each point in the skeleton of one leaf, we compute the main plane uh, of that part of the leaf and then we project all the 3D points into that plane. In this way, we're able to compute a, com a convex hull in 2D and get uh, the, the area of the, of the leaf. For the stem length and the, the leaf length, we use similar approaches. Again, we define, we, com we, um, we consider each part of the stem or the leaf and compute the, um, the maximum distance between two, the points in the point cloud that were associated to, the, to that part of the, of, the, of the leaf or the stem. And in this way, we are able to uh, track different, uh, um, these different traits of the plants that, were, uh, that can tell us, for example, if the plant has, um, has undergone stress or um, something like this. So we present a fully automatic, non-destructive, ob objective and repeatable approach to monitor plant traits over time. Our approach start by computing a semantic skeletonization of a, point, of, of a plant point cloud. And based on this skeletonization, we perform a hierarchical data association based on the uh, Hungarian method that will give us the optimal uh, set of correspondences given our defined cost matrices. In this way, we are able to handle the anisotropic growth of the plant, for example, the emergence of new leaves. Um, and in this way, we are able to, uh, to, um, to monitor different uh, plant traits over time. Again, our approach is fully automatic, non-destructive, and repeatable. We have released uh, our code and the data set used in this paper. Thank you for your attention.